coming tonight. Thank you, Mish, for joining us. Um, just before we get started, I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping, a few notes. Um, yeah, welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, if you have come to an event before, welcome back. If it's your first event with us, welcome to Majors in Quinn. We are small independent booksellers in uptown Minneapolis, obviously. Um, and tonight we are joined by Mish Sen, who is the author of her first cookbook, This Beautiful Indian Kitchen Secrets, that she will be talking about this evening. Um, so we'll have Mish um, kind of take us through these beautiful spices that she's brought. She's got, everybody has a map, I believe. Um, so we'll just yeah, have this little event, um, have a discussion. We'll have time for a bit of Q&A at the end if anybody has questions or throughout, however you, yes, you well, want to do it. Whatever, um, yeah. And then once we wrap up here, we'll all kind of head to the front of the store and we will be signing cookbooks. Um, have a little bit more one-on-one -on -one discussion, kind of however you guys are feeling it. Um, if you do purchase a cookbook this evening, you're not only supporting this wonderful first-time author, but um, an independent business in uptown Minneapolis, so thank you um, from everybody involved. Uh, and masks are not required, but if you'd like them, we have extras on the table over there. Uh, and, oh, you'll, for those just joining us, we're doing a drawing this evening for a spice set and spice pin. So if I could have everybody who just walked in throw your name down on a post-it and then put it in this bag, we will draw for the spices at the end of the event. Um, I think that's everything I needed to cover. So Thank you. So I'll hand it off to you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, welcome everyone. Thanks for being here. Cold November night. Thanks, Majors and Quinn. Thanks, Jeff, for hosting me. Um, so my name is Mish Sen, and I have, this is my baby that, mm -hmm. that I labored for, for a year, um, and I'm really happy that I can share this with you tonight. But I know some of you have exposure to spices, you've lived in India, uh, but I still would like to share, you know, a little bit about spices that you may know or maybe you don't. So the most important thing is there are five basic Indian spices that we use. One of them is turmeric, and we know a lot about turmeric, right? Because it's very much in the news um, as anti-inflammatory, but it's also antibacterial. I don't know if a lot of us know this. So my grandmother, so we, she didn't have, she had a fridge, but she wouldn't put uncooked meats and fish, etc., in the fridge. Only cooked food went there. And I grew up in Calcutta, and you know, I don't know what time of the year you went, but it can get pretty hot. It's kind of like Florida. So oftentimes it was humid, and the fish is bought every day, fresh, but it doesn't get cooked till the health comes, which could be at 11 a.m. So, but the but my grandfather's already gone to the market around like seven. So the fish is outside. So she would put a paste of turmeric and salt and coat it. That is antiseptic and it really, really prevents decay. It prevents, you know, any bacteria that might be there. So she would wash it, of course, cut it, and she would coat it. And even anything we cook, we add turmeric for that reason. It's something that's like second nature. If I cook something, I would always throw it. I can't even imagine cooking without turmeric because there's just so much ingrained in us. Um, but that is one of the big reasons um, is antibacterial properties. Um, and another very common spice is cumin, which is pretty mainstream now. We have cumin in a lot of Mexican food, and I think it's available in any grocery store now, but it wasn't the case when I first came. It would be only in Indian stores. So cumin, so these little tiny guys, they're extremely fragrant, as a lot of you might know. Um, if you smell it, you'll get a mild smell, and I can pass this around, but if you roast it, it gets even more you know, intense. And there's another thing that we do sometimes in cooking, that is um, putting these spices, any whole spice, in hot fat, like in oil. So we, we heat the oil, add 
when it's a, when it's kind of like shimmery, that's when we put these whole seeds, and it infuses the oil and later on the curry with this beautiful aroma. It's a very quick way to infuse aroma, infuse that antioxidants that are in these seeds. And cumin is really good for your gut. It's cooling also. And there are many others um, that I may not know, but I know for sure. And I can pass this around. Uh, Turmeric, I think a lot of us know, this, and it's also very staining, so I'm not passing this around. Um, then we have these coriander seeds, these guys. And if you see cilantro, uh, in India we call them coriander leaves because it's the leaf of the seed. This is also really fragrant when it's roasted and also when it's ground. Um, what I do usually is I buy whole spices and I grind them in my coffee. I have a designated coffee grinder for spices and it's really wonderful. Somehow if you keep it in a jar, even it's just like, I feel like it just, uh, that whole fresh smell does go away over time. Although I've discovered a brand, 365, that's a whole food, and I don't know why I'm promoting them. But, <laughs> but they, their coriander, hi, um, is very fresh, and I don't know how they, how they do it. Even after, I would say, a month, it looks like this eye just freshly. So that's a good, that's the only coriander ground spice that I've found in my history here in the U.S that smells as fresh as fresh brown. So I recommend that brand. But this is Oriander. You can pass this around. Uh, so, so three of them. So I said cumin, turmeric, coriander, and chili powder. Indians love to eat with heat. You know, they, there's, I do want to digress and say that we say Indian food is spicy in general. But when we say spicy, we mean flavorful, not really hot, not with a kick, but some of us do like to add this, and I would have one of them. This kind though, which says Kashmiri, is uh, more vibrant in color and less hot. So the curry looks pretty, but it's not as hot. So this is what I would recommend, and this is what I use too. Uh, so turmeric, chili, coriander that you have here. Um, Cumin, and there's a blend that I didn't bring, but you, have you heard of garam masala? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's another staple we put in a lot of our dishes. It's a spice blend, so it has, it also has regional nuances, you know, like in Bengal, where I'm from, where you've gone, we put only three spices, a card, cardamom, equal uh, quantities of cardamom and cinnamon, and a lesser, maybe half of that, of cloves, and we grind it to a fine powder, and that's the Bengali garam masala, or the ones that we usually have at the ones that restaurants cook with. They have nutmeg, they have black pepper, they have roasted cumin, it's a lot, like nine or 10 spices. Um, and that just imparts a beautiful, it just finishes the dish, you know? Um, you might cook and all stuff can say, ah, something is missing, just put a little garam masala. Now what does garam masala mean? Does anyone know? Okay, so garam means hot or warming. And masala is the Hindi word for spices. So it means warming spices. So it has garam masala usually has cardamoms, cloves, cinnamon. They can warm your body. And um, so sometimes my mom, I remember, in the summer she wouldn't put too much garam masala in things because it does heat your body, but uh, it's not to the extent that you start feeling hot, but there is, you know, there is some heat going on. Um, and that's why in Delhi, and this is all like, you know, the ones that has the nine spices, that formula comes from the Northwest, where the kings, you know, literally our Indian cuisine is the influence of Persian cooking, Mongolian, Chinese, so there's a, uh, even Portuguese, so there's a lot of infl a lot of um, infusion. Uh, and the Persian part comes, like the garam masala is that Persian influence, which is not mainstream. So India actually, if you see in the map, um, it's, it's a peninsula.
and so the most of it is. I mean, I would say two thirds of it is. So it was a big, um, it was a target for explorers and conquerors to come and obviously do trade or actually conquer and, uh, you know, expand their empire. And it was vulnerable to it because you can just get there by sea most of the time. And other, t and other times, except this one where it says Pakistan, can you see Pakistan and beyond it is Afghanistan? That was the most difficult route because they had those very hard and arid mountains. If you have heard of Khyber Pass, passes are, you know, little entrance in mountains. Um, otherwise it's really hard. So this was a hard, the hardest route, but still people did come. And then we had the Chinese invasion, then we had all of, you know, the British, the French, the Portuguese, they all came. And, you know, we are a richer country because of that, because a lot of our culture is an infusion. For the, the British gave us the language, gave us trains, gave us tea. And I was very surprised to learn as I, you know, read my cookbook and did some research that the Portuguese gave us tomatoes, potatoes, sweet potatoes, chilies, without which we can't live, you know? So that was really eye-opening that, okay, so all these things that we love is actually wasn't there. So I looked further and I said, how did we even, I know we always liked heat. It's a 5,000 year dated, you know, cuisine. We used to use black pepper in India. They used to use black pepper to, you know, heat, give the kick. But once they discovered chilies, everything is history. There's so many different kinds. So that was a very interesting little trivia that I learned. So, um, so India was also, it's the biggest even now, the produces the most, I would say the largest quantity of spices worldwide. And in ancient times, it was the center of the spice route. I don't know if you've heard of that, but it's a route that started on the western coast of Japan through the islands of Indonesia um, around India, to the land of the Middle East, across the Mediterranean, Mediterranean to Europe. So it was like a 9,000 plus route that people did by mostly sea, sometimes even by land. And it, but I would say mostly sea. And at each port, there would be trading going on. People would buy, you know, whatever people were selling, but spices were the most coveted and the most expensive thing. So, you know, we just are a land of spices and a lot of our spices that you have here, originally, they're sourced from India. You have to, there's no other way. Um, Kerala as a state is really big on cardamom, pepper, and other things. They, they supply most of the spices that India grows. So spices are, you know, not only but they're also healing. And I really discovered that much later because you know when your grandmother tells you to drink something, oh, drink this fennel tea, no one cares. You know, we're doing, oh no, we want the latest Western thing which is supposed to be the best healing, you know. But later on we understood and now we know that fennel is so calming and so good for your digestion. So I actually want to give everybody here an ebook on the healing power, it's got about 10 recipes, I think, nine or 10, on um, deep bloating, spices that help you deep bloat. Because I, I think everybody has issues with bloating from time to time, and these recipes, which are really simple, like teas and stuff like that, or a drink, are made with spices that you either soak in hot or cold water, or maybe blend or something. So I, I wanna give this for, for, for coming today. I, everyone so one of them is fennel tea basically what is it is it's boiled water with a whole bunch of fennel and then <laughs> and then you have to wait because it has to gradually soak I mean fall under it floats fennel doesn't you know uh, doesn't dissolve or not, doesn't even go down but it is heavy so over time in the next two minutes it'll go on the bottom of the glass, that's when you drink it. And you can also drink the fennel seeds later. That is really, it's that, you know, it's not quick, and that itself is also helpful. 
Um, same thing with uh, cumin. Cumin is very, very good for your gut. And a little bit of roasted cumin. What I do sometimes is I roast it, dry roast it, no oil involved, in a pan and dry grind it and I keep it in an airtight container. So I always have it. You just put it over like potatoes or anything and you know on top. Sometimes I put it over yogurt. Um, just plain yogurt and a little bit of this, a tiny bit of salt. And it's really flavorful and it's good for you. And well, yogurt itself is good for us. Um, and another interesting spice that I wanted to talk to you about, and I'll show it to you, are black onion seeds. I don't know if you've ever seen these. So they are, I think, called carom seeds. No, that's Ajwain. Um, they're called Kalo Jira in, in Bengali. But I think it's just called black onion seeds. This is so flavorful. The one of the dishes that I can tell you right now that I do is oil, you know, a little bit, maybe a teaspoon. When it's hot, put in this. Usually I cook potatoes with it. Any cubed, small, you know, cubed potatoes. And maybe one green chili, but you can put like a little, little strips of bell pepper. And you saute it, and then you cover it, cook it. It's absolutely so wonderful. And you can have it with a flat bread, or even just bread. Um, and this is another thing that is pretty staple in our kitchen, is uh, dried red chilies. They are not as you know lethal as they look. They're really not <laughs> as harmful or like uh, like potent, but they do. Um, it, it just give a little bit of like a. I don't know how to describe it, but a little bit of a. I would want to say nutty, but it's not that. It's smoky. Yeah. If you if you just take a little bit of oil and let it get dark, it will get pretty dark. That that smoky smell is. Just different. It's very nice, and a lot of Asian other have you. You might have noticed Asian like kung pao, chicken or kung pao vegetables. They have this. They used in Chinese cooking too. Now, does anybody know what these are? Have, have you seen these? I can pass these out too. Cardamom. Yeah, they are kind of cardamom. Winner, winner. <laughs> Good job. So these are not the typical green cardamom that you may be familiar with. That's black cardamom. And those are usually used for rice dishes like biryani, if you've heard of that. Um, they're a little bit, and you don't need too many of them, just one would flavor the entire pot of rice. And these are also equally strong, but you can use cardamom in savory dishes as well as desserts. And that's the uniqueness of this cardamom. And garam masala also has this. This is the one of the most versatile um, spice that I know. You can smell it. This is from Kerala. Very, very fragrant. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about, this is very interesting and it's very native to where I come from. It's called paunch horon. Has anybody heard of that? Paunch means five in Bengali. Horon is that process of putting seeds into hot fat. So that, when you put these seeds in hot fat or any seed, it splutters and little crackles. That's called horon. It's just, you know, terminology that's used in, uh, but it's a blend of five. So it has the black seeds that I passed around. Um, something called fenugreek seeds. Fenugreek seeds from the fenugreek leaves. This is also really good for lowering blood sugar, it, it, it's known to. Um, then it has like fennel, black, then methi, which is fenugreek. Um, then it has mustard seeds, black mustard. And then it has cumin. So a lot of the food that we cook from the region I am, this is the first thing that goes in the oil. Because we don't often in our area, uh, vegetables are not cooked with onions. Vegetables are usually cooked with this type of flavoring because it does have a nice strong flavor in a nice way. And then you put your vegetables, mixed vegetables with a turmeric, a salt, you cover and cook. And when you cook meat and chicken, of course you can put onions and garlic and whatever. But in our, where we come from, um, and I kind of included you because you've gone there. 
where you've gone and I come from. <laughs> um, it's so exciting to pass on this down to my little area on the east side of the country because that's not, like I said, the most pop popular destination. Um, so we would also sometimes roast it and grind it and put it in chutneys, like a tomato chutney or something. Um, it's very unique to East. And another thing about India is people usually can guess. Like if I ever cook this and someone comes to my house, um, they would know that here, they would know if they know India, they would know, okay, she's from the East. Um, then there's something called curry leaves. They are, they are very fragrant that we use in cooking. Usually the south, the southern part of India cooks with that leaf. So anything that has that, we would just say, oh, it's a South Indian dish, you know, but there are so many parts of South India, we wouldn't know which one it is, but it's very, very regional. Um, and then in the north, they do cook a lot of vegetarian dishes with the same way they cook meat or chicken, very rich with onions, garlic, tomatoes, everything. So it's, we know, oh, okay, that's what the, the, that's a typical restaurant type of food that you might be used to, because the restaurants are more um, North Indian kind of cooking. Um, so, so yeah, that's a little bit about spices. And by the way, I do want to say that these cloves, as we, these are whole cloves. These are, they're really good when you have a toothache. You just place it on your, you know, gum area chew on it gently and the essential oils that are released they really are very good for toothaches I've done that many times so it's uh, one of the medicinal properties of, of cloves I think that's about it um, any questions of spices okay a question yes that, that long pepper yeah that can, you don't eat that right you just it's just for flavor we, we do but oh, you, you don't do. have to I do Okay. Sometimes what we do, I don't know if you know this, but sometimes Indians eat with their fingers. So they would just rub it and like they would just go like this to kind of infuse it so you're not taking a huge chunk of real meat. So we kind of distribute it on our plate mm -hmm. sometimes if you're in the mood. Um, otherwise we just do it, yeah. But it can be eaten, it's definitely a personal choice. So I think I've covered, and this is, um, this is the dried leaf of this seed. So when this is fresh, it's like a whole bunch of like cilantro, but you can actually, and it's it's got like it's almost like thyme, you know, but a little bit more leafy. So you can just take it out like you would thyme, and we usually mix it with um, potatoes and make bread out of it, or um, add just add it fresh with some. Usually, a lot of potatoes are cooked with methi, which is fenugreek leaves, and these are dry. And this is a really a, the most important ingredient in anything butter masala, whether it's paneer butter masala or chicken butter masala or methi, something, something. If you see that, this is what they're using. Otherwise, it's not going to taste like, this is like what gives a restaurant smell, I would say. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, so today we're going to draw later. So there's one last question. I, yes. I just wanted with the, with the fenugreek, what do you usually use that in? I use it, so this, the only thing I use it for is part of this blend. Okay. And um, my husband's family is from the south of India, mm -hmm. so they make something called idli, which is a fermented rice batter, and you steam it. So when they soak the rice, my mother-in-law had told me, put in some of this. This. I don't know why, but it gives some kind of distinct flavor and also keeps it soft, like it helps with the fermentation. But that's like a formula. You always throw in a bunch of, um, but otherwise I don't use it. And my mom sometimes soaks it. She has um, blood sugar, like she has diabetes. Um, so that, she does it that way too. Yeah. It's a very unique spice. Not, but it's, it's, like I said, I only know two or three uses. Yeah. And I think that's what people use it for. Yeah. <laughs> Very <laughs> limited. It makes it sounds good. Yeah, I know. It's like a good idea. Yeah. Good health tips and good recipe options. It's yeah. Good. But this is also good, like soaked in just water. And it's 
apart from the diabetes, it's also very healing. But I would say to be careful with this because it can also, I've been told, also reduce the blood sugar. So you don't want to suddenly start feeling like <laughs> dizzy or something. So, so you have it as a tea or you stew it with tea? You no, know, it's like a tea, like okay. yeah, with just with the water. Okay. Yeah. So, so we'll do the drawings. I love this. Um, so by the way, I, I had one, I did an event recently. So I took, I take my spice box because it's always fun for people. And I was doing an in-person cooking you know, event. After that, my husband, always the cleaner, has kept it somewhere. With, I can't find my own spice box. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like using, I'm taking things from here and there, but this is what it looks like. You put the essential spices. Usually I put turmeric, cumin, coriander, mustard seeds, some garam masala, like the whole. And anything else, sometimes I put, I don't know if you've heard of chapat masala. Um, it's something you put on, you know, street food. Um, and you can leave one, like, if you want to. But, you know, we use, we use what we use with that. So this is really nice. And I'm really happy for whoever would get this. <laughs> with the five essential spices. Okay, who who am I really, and why am I writing a book? You know, <laughs> uh, as, a, as some of you know, I've been a teacher, and then I've moved into digital marketing in 2020. But I've always enjoyed cooking, and some of it was, it's just you have to know how to cook. When I came here, I knew like three dishes. One was chili chicken, which is like the Chinese influence. It was Indo Chinese. One was a um, rice dish called pilaf, and a basic chicken curry. And I knew how to bake a cake on the stove top <laughs> because we didn't have an oven. The, you, there's this particular way you can use the whole big, you know, the deep pot and bake. So I knew how to make a basic cake. Um, but then, you know, you have to, you want to eat your food. Uh, I, you know, so I looked at the cookbooks and it, it was so overwhelming. Firstly, nothing turned out like they said it would. <laughs> and, and it took longer or, you know, it was like, not accurate, you know. Um, so I was always struggling. So this is early, early when I when I was in, went to school here. I went to grad school here. I called my mom, and we used to call. This was a, I was in a while ago, so we didn't call as often. We didn't have WhatsApp. So it was like, you know, every two weeks you're calling to India. It's so expensive. And then of course I had my aunt here, so it was much easier to call and just call and ask recipes. She would give some and. You know, Indians don't really know, uh, we don't really measure. There's a lot of eyeballing. So whenever I asked my aunt, she would say, oh, just put the, all the masalas and then you do this and that. So I, what is the all the masala? You know, that's always been a bit of a struggle. <laughs> um, because I don't think, it's just quick, 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 this is how you do it. So then you ask friends, some people who are really good cooks. And one thing with people who are from other countries, we are immigrants, right? Even though now, of course, we're Americans too. But there is this thing, a little competitiveness. <laughs> so sometimes recipe ingredients would not all be disclosed. So you would, you may not have reproduced the, the wonderful dish that you had at someone's house. Uh, although they said, here's the recipe, and they would just tell you. Um, so sometimes that happens. So I said, okay, maybe I should be asking. You know, it's their pride and joy, and they've you know learned it must be in the hard way, like I'm trying to learn. So then you just go and experiment, or when your parents come or your in-laws come, you watch them. And and then for me, which was really amazing, and I didn't know this about me, I actually did a lot from the sense of the memory of smell. That, that was my grandmother's, because I spent a lot of time with my grandparents, and you know, all the smells wafting, nothing, I thought of it, but now, as I was learning, something wasn't right, something wasn't right. So those smells really helped me with this. I don't know how, because I couldn't identify the spices. But when I was able to find the right combination, it was, aha, that's how it should smell like. So I knew that, okay, now this is good. And that base has been a total process, you know? And of course, some friends did give active recipes, and then, but I've never found success with a cookbook. I always find them, um, very Indian cookbooks to be like pages of ingredients and two pages of instructions. 
for me, that's very overwhelming because, you know, I feel like I want to cook fast. I've just come back from work. I have kids and, you know, I'm doing this. So, and I don't have the patience, honestly. So that is really the thing. Some people are very meticulous and they will take the time and they would keep that, you know, three hour block and they will produce that thing. But that's not me. So I never, you know, so anyway, I never got to write a cookbook at that time. But gradually when I started cooking, I realized, you know what, I'm actually simplifying all these recipes. So I never even thought of it, it didn't connect, but as I was blogging last year, so last year I started my blog, which I've been wanting to for a long time. Uh, in COVID, I was not working, so I, my husband said, it just, you wanted to do this, just go ahead and do it now. Like, do it in a focused way. So I actually made that my full-time job, and that's when I started understanding that, you know, I've actually done a lot of simplifying. And sometimes it's, it's a little embarrassing to even share the simplifying because people might think it's not authentic. Like, I always struggled with it. So is this really authentic now that I'm using tomato sauce uh, from an American can, but not really doing puree? And I said, no, I don't care. You know, I said some other words, but I didn't <laughs> say it. I, you know, I said, this is how I'm gonna cook. And this works for me and it tastes really good. Why should I do the five steps when I can actually, why would I go and roast peanuts and, and crush them when I can use peanut butter? I want to use peanut butter, you know? I, I, didn't, I can do a peanut butter, that's just high cooking, but you know, it'll still taste the same. Same thing with a lot of, um, I sometimes use jarred things, but, and I don't want to sound, you know, uppity, but of course the ingredients matter. You don't want to get a jar spice, which has tons of citric and acid and preservative. So that's where I would invest. I would go to a, a place that I really trust and whose jarred stuff is also really good stuff. And I know what I'm putting in my body is good and good ingredients lead to good results. That's what I say. So if there's anything I want to invest in, I invest in my ingredients, my oils, my anything that I put inside my body, I invest in that. Um, but I would never tongue down my nose that, oh, you please just grate your ginger all the time. Of course, that's ideal, but when you're coming home at seven and you really have to put dinner and you're starving and you want to get the jar, there's nothing to feel bad about it. Cooking is about simplifying. Cooking is about producing good, wholesome results, okay? So if you've got ingredients that are fresh and good to begin with, any shortcut doesn't matter. So that's how I cook. I'm, I'm, my, all my dishes are usually like half an hour uh, long because, so in two hours I usually do four dishes. Um, it might take a newer person cooking Indian food a little longer because I already know what goes when and how to do it. But you know, so I would say even if you take an hour or 45 minutes, that's totally fine. Um, so as I was doing my blog, I used to get, so I, you know, I just did my blog because I wanted to. I wasn't thinking of, okay, am I really healthy? But as, the only thing I knew is whatever I say has to be reproducible. People should find success with what I'm doing. That's the premise of, you know, the teacher premise that came up. But gradually I learned, I got a lot of feedback from many, many people saying that this has been a real savior because it's easy, because it's step by step, and I usually put my entire recipe in Instagram and Facebook. A lot of people just give little bits and pieces and drive people to their website, which is, that's where they want to flourish. Um, for me, I don't have a website yet. I mean, I do, I'm just building it. Um, and when it's done, I, would, I often wonder how will I drive traffic? <laughs> Maybe I'll have to do a little bit of that too, but people depend on, I feel like they know that I'll always put the full recipe. They don't have to click out anywhere, you know? So I've heard from a lot of people that, you know what, used to hate the kitchen. Now we're being forced to cook, but it's been easy and it's not hard. The ingredients are pretty simple. The steps are easy. So thank you so much. So I've been hearing that throughout 2020. Then I had this idea that I think I could, I think this will be helpful. There are who could use, there are people like the audience here who likes Indian food. Um, I don't know if you cook it or not, but I know a lot of people because I do teach in community ed, so 
situations and in private homes, I'm always sorry that he, he's always afraid to cook it. It seems so overwhelming, so unknown. Where do we buy the you know spices? What do we do with the leftovers? So we never went, you know. So all of these things, the aha moment was, I went to Amazon to search. Are there are there any real Indian like beginner level cookbooks? They seem to be because they came up, and I bought them all. And when I read it, I just didn't think that they were that easy. They were great cookbooks, but a little bit advanced, you know? So this, I feel like, is a true, true beginner cookbook. And that's what I'm hoping that I'm bringing. I'm, I'm, my problem that I'm solving is, this is not about me. It's I know there is a little bit of a gap because so many people tell me that I want to, but I'm hesitant. I want to, but I don't know where to get it. I want to, but it seems too tough. I'll just go to a restaurant. But it's not. A lot of these ingredients you can actually buy in your regular grocery stores. Because that was one of my problems. And when the COVID hit, especially when that happened, some of the Indian stores were not even, they were closed down. They were, and a lot of the supplies come from Jersey and they had a COVID outbreak. So they actually shut down that distribution. So I had to go to Red Cup or whatever I was going. Uh, but I already knew I would find what I, you know. So except for curry leaves, which you can always omit. Um, and another thing that I like to do sometimes is fresh, frozen, shredded coconut. Because to shred a coconut is extremely labor intensive. But the, and the Indian stores have solved this problem by getting really good quality coconut shredded. It's in the freezer department. And it's absolutely wonderful. We didn't have that ago so they really innovated and brought out these things so we can look authentic so those are the only two things that I in this cookbook have said you may want to go um, and even that's not like the most vital ingredient so anything else is easily available so I want to show you some maybe the, somebody can I don't know how to turn it I just would you mind just turning the photos and then I can read a bit about so by the way, here, what I've done, thank you so much for that, <laughs> is I have actually shown you how to use this book. The way I structured the recipe, there's not a whole list. It's, um, I've told you, these are core spices. We are interested in cooking Indian, there will be some core spices you would have to buy. So every recipe will have the core spices that are whole, core spices that are ground, and core spices that are fresh, which is mostly ginger, garlic. And the other ingredients are things that you might need to buy, and a lot of things you may have in your pantry. So I've done some explanations. I also have some QR codes at the back. Um, if you have an Instagram account, you can, because I post on Instagram, can get these videos, um, you can access them, but if you can't, if you don't want to create an account, I can send them to you, I'll give you my email. I'll give you a little thing about spices, a little bit about the spice chores here. And then, sorry, we're gonna do it here. Haven't mastered the graceful way of showing my cookbook. <laughs> so then it's just breakfast, lunch. This is um, something called upma. I don't know if you know what that is. It's uh, made of semolina, but there's also one ingredient, which is moong dal, soaked, vegan, and very easy. Uh, it's super easy, super filling. And of course, we have omelets, but this is like the Indian twist. This is some Indian spices. And this is one of my favorite breakfasts. It's called the French toast, but it's savory. And so we have some, some of these breakfasts, and I have some main courses. This is... Um, have you heard of Bing and Bhatta? It's a smoked eggplant that you, it's so easy to cook, but it's just yum. <laughs> I have a few pictures. I, I like a lot of pictures in cookbook. So I tried to get some of those. This is something called like a one pot dish. You might've heard of Kichdi, but this is called Tahiri. It's got vegetables and some aromatic spices. And then we have our paneers. I'm not gonna tell you everything, but these are definitely browns. This is a quintessential.
show is in curry chicken curry. This is butter chicken, but you can also make it with um, paneer or potatoes, anything. So, and we have some Indo Chinese. This is chili chicken, I have chili paneer. This is some lentils. I think there's quite a few lentils because I love lentils. And it's so easy and filling. But it became really popular around 2020. And this is another one that you may have heard of, the golden milk. People, it's a turmeric infused milk. You can do it with almond milk, you can do it with regular milk. It's really good for sleep, especially with people who have insom like tendencies of insomnia. Uh, and it's supposed to soothe. And anything with turmeric is obviously good. And it has a little honey, but if you are or nothing at all. This is a buttermilk drink, which I love. Delicious. And then we have some appetizers. This is a potato sandwich. This is a pork and that's also made of potatoes. This is a chicken. This is all the things that I've eaten growing up. It's very simple. This is a dessert. Really simple. This is a no cook dessert. You just eat as a kid with coconut and some one or two other ingredients. This is a vegan pudding. This is an almond milk. This is a very quintessential dessert. Gajar halwa, you might have heard of it. Restaurants usually have it. But it, it's really easy. It's very, actually it's a, more of a healthy dessert. This is called kala khan. It's very, very quintessential Indian. So, and uh, thank you so much. <laughs> I also wanted to show you how to make plain rice. <laughs> technique, which I don't know how well I've explained it, but when I make rice, I just uh, kind of hold it in a way that the starch is allowed to, um, you know, pour out and the rice remains. But of course, the rice cooker is easiest, but sometimes the proportions are, people don't know. So I kind of explain, okay, how do you cook basmati plain rice? Now you learned all of this, but how do you really cook rice? So this is, I thought, an important thing, especially for beginner cooks. And then we, I know a lot of us love flatbread, but flatbreads are actually a little advanced. So, but this paratha is something anybody can do. So I have one flatbread, so if you thought, oh, the book doesn't have a flatbread, because flatbreads need a skill to roll out. But this, you don't need that rolling out skill. You just put, you don't have to make it a perfect circle. This is a triangle. You can make it a circle, you can do it a square. And it needs a little roasting. So this and it's really delicious. And you can make it with whole wheat or a mixture of whole wheat and flour. So I thought those two were were important. And then and I, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit in this book about what tarka is. Remember I said that um, the technique of putting whole spices in hot fat. Why do we do that? And the different aspects of that, can you do it ahead of time or what is the science behind it? So I have a little video that you can scan with a QR. Um, but the main thing is I've explained it. It's very, very unique to Indian cooking. And sometimes you do it at the beginning, and sometimes you do it at the end. So well, how are we doing for time, sir? Um, about 10 minutes. Okay, so I'll read a little bit. tell you really the entire story because why I love this book. Um, Hi, I'm Mish. Do you love Indian foods? Do you want to learn how to cook your restaurant favorites but feel overwhelmed at the thought of a list of spices and the complex variations? Well, you've gone to the right cookbook, the 
Indian Kitchen Secrets, I will teach you how to master a few Indian dishes without the overwhelm. So that's the reason I wrote the book also. You guys don't always feel overwhelmed. And I think that's important to be successful in Indian cuisine. By the way, I could relate to the overwhelm. Yes, I can relate to it. When I came to this country, I knew how to cook a handful of Indian dishes. I was born and raised in India and was familiar with the spices, but I still found navigating through Indian cookbooks incredibly challenging. Everything seemed complex and time consuming. I was going to grad school and I was a TA, um, teacher's assistant, and didn't have much spare time. As I later came to realize, my experience was a very common one. I have had many conversations with friends, family members, and students. I taught in my community education Indian cooking classes for adults. These experiences and conversations have made one thing clear. The overwhelm is a serious and widespread problem. This people love Indian food but are wary of cooking it for themselves because they think it's just too darn difficult. Last year, I left a career in digital marketing to become a full-time food blogger. The world of social media has allowed me to expand my circle of interactions even more. Many of my followers have messaged me saying how they used to fear in the kitchen and how my recipes have helped them be successful in the kitchen, how they've been receiving compliments from family, how joyful they feel in finding easy, simple, wholesome recipes they can cook easily or even on the weekend. So there's hope. Following a recipe for an Indian dish doesn't have to test your mental and physical limits, nor does cooking Indian food at home have to be costly or inconvenient. Cooking Indian food can be fun, can be authentic, it can and will be delicious. That's a promise. It's true that Indian cuisine is complex, each dish is flavored with its regional nuances. There is not one Indian cookbook that can capture Indian cooking in its entirety. Over time though, what I realized is that Indian cooking can be simplified without losing its authenticity. Once I realized this, I started simplifying many of the popular Indian dishes so I could make them quickly and easily at home. I must tell you that it's been a pleasant surprise. Um, Indian dishes can be made with relatively few ingredients, and many of those ingredients are, once you find in your pantry, trimming down the list of ingredients doesn't result in losing the dish's essence or its authenticity, nor does substituting certain ingredients for others, like tofu, is it a paneer? This brings us to the second core concept, adaptability. Indian dishes are highly adaptable to an American kitchen, as I have learned. A lot of items available in my local no neighborhood grocery store can be used to make authentic Indian dishes. And nowadays, a lot of non-perishable Indian ingredients are available online. When I first came to the US, I didn't drive or own a car, so trips to the Indian grocery stores were infrequent. Most often, I would visit my regular American grocery store and was able to find ingredients to cook many Indian dishes successfully. Recently, in the aftermath of the global pandemic of 2020, some Indian stores were temporarily closed, and I was able to find what I needed to cook Indian food right in my regular grocery store. For example, if I wanted to make chana masala, I was able to get canned garbanzo beans. If I wanted to make pulao, I was able to get fragrant, fragrant basmati rice. If I wanted to make coriander mint chutney, I was able to get both coriander leaves, which is cilantro, and mint leaves easily. I could also find lentils, garam masala, cumin, coriander, and all kinds of brown spices from my American grocery stores. So even though shopping in an Indian grocery store opens up many more choices, you can buy a lot of the basic ingredients to cook Indian food right in your neighborhood store. So Indian cuisine is really accessible and easy to prepare for. I'll skip a little bit. Um, so really, my goal is to make Indian cooking simple for you. Indian Kitchen Secrets was born out of the goal. You don't have to have complicated directions. And let me say how excited I am to be sharing the things I've learned over the years. I hope you enjoy this book. Indian cuisine is filled with wonderful flavors and filling meals. You're in for an incredible journey. actually was, um, this is not my idea. I wanted something simplistic, so I have to give um, a lot of kudos
goes to Nick, who is my designer, and he, because initially I just wanted to feature chai. I just said I want one, and I wanted like something that is, that everybody can recognize, because I saw that all the cookbooks had too much curry and too much yellow, orange, very overwhelming. So he said, no, you need to put a quintessential Indian curry, maybe something different, like a coconut chutney. And I like this because it has movement because of the bubbles. So that's why it's in the middle. But this color is his idea. And I think I really love it. It works really well. It's beautiful. Yeah. So thanks to Nick. But thank you so much. Any questions? ginger ground ginger so it's uh, if you follow the recipe it's very simple and you store it in a um, airtight container because it makes a lot it, it makes you can make you could possibly but I prefer to make this is my recipe and I always make them this much mm. and then you add a teaspoon and you boil it, um, it in the directions you know milk and the tea together that is a very North Indian thing by the way chai is a very North Indian Thing, where I'm from, we don't we uh, don't boil tea as much, but chai is universally loved. So I do make it at home quite a bit, but that's not what I learned at home. I learned it later. Actually, I learned it from my cousin who lives in Delhi because it's a very Punjabi thing. Um, so if you want to take a look at it, you can yeah. check it out. Yeah, for sure. Anything else? Yeah, ch I have the chai, the popular ones, you know, which is easy. Yes. So I go to, um, I go to, you can get it in all these two, uh, Cobb, because I've gone there in the spice section, you have garam masala, you have cumin, coriander, turmeric, and chili powder. Uh, it's just that um, I have really fallen in love with this company called Frontier Co-op, and they are in the place I shop. They, they are also, I think they're a Wisconsin Co-op, so I think they are online, but I go to Lakeman's, they have three or four, and they sell that, and their garam masala is the best. It's the best, and, but I don't know what happens, but it's like a jinx. Every time I buy this garam masala, I leave it somewhere. Like I go to an event, <laughs> so every time I buy like $9 garam masala, <laughs> and it's like used, but it's so fragrant. So I really like them, but um, honestly, you would get it anywhere, wherever you shop, the five basics that I said, cumin, coriander, Chili, if you want it, or a masala is available anywhere. But um, then, like I said, you can get it on Amazon. But um, yeah, so, so it's should not be. The India Spice House, when we were yeah. talking early on. Yeah, so Indian India Prairie. Spice House is my favorite Indian store. Um, it's in Indian Prairies. It's pretty centrally located. And they have really fresh and varied things. Um, so if you, there'll be like three or four different kinds of garam masala. So you have more choices, and you can't go wrong. I don't even have any recommendations of okay which garam masala exactly should you buy because they're all fine, you know, um, and it's all fresh. So they have so much turnover. You know, this packet that you're buying is probably just gotten it two weeks ago. So that's why I go there, and it's very clean. Um, and this, yeah, these things you won't get in you know regular America. But honestly, I don't have this in the book because. This I consider a little more advanced, only because who would buy this unless you are going to be cooking it over and over again? And this is very, very like a regional. The food here is things people are familiar with, you know, um, easy, quick. Like I have a jeera right, a jeera ali, which is like cumin and potato curry. So cumin you can buy anywhere. You can also buy whole cumin in most American grocery stores. They have in a jar. You can buy bay leaves, you can buy cardamom, cloves, um, cinnamon, nutmeg, all of these things. They're so accessible. But if you want to go to an Indian store, I would just close your eyes and go to Indian Prairie because <laughs> <laughs> and just look, I, I must tell them, but I've done some work with them, so 
but that's not why I got in now that I sculpted. It's on multiple levels, really, I recommend. They really deserve to be recommended. They do a really good job. They work really hard. They bring in fresh stuff. They reorganize. They clean. Everything's in its place. There's very helpful staff. So, yeah. And mustard seeds, there's two kinds, as you may know, white and um, black. They both work. We tend to use more of the black in Indian cooking. Great. Thank you so much. Oh, you're yeah. very welcome. Very welcome. Yeah, yeah so, um, here. so I imagine. What? Maybe do the drawing, and yes. then we're going to take this up to, we have a big stack of books up front. Get them signed. Sounds like it would be a great gift for the holidays. Oh, it's just going to be right in time for the Yeah, time. absolutely. Yeah, I think. Um, so. so, so Steph, you can draw. Yeah. Draw from. Okay, Peter. 